and welcome to Most Haunted. Money has always been a motive for murder and inheritance the oldest excuse. And that's the reason why two people were callously killed here in this building, a father and a sister. Their ghosts are said to roam this building along with monks and lost children. And that's why I had to bring you to Arreton Manor. Few buildings can trace their origins over 12 centuries, but Arreton Manor has existed here since 872 AD, an era when Alfred the Great owned the house. Lying southwest of the island's principal town, Newport, parts of this current construction date as far back as the 14th century. Such is its dense history that this same property was referred to in the Doomsday Book of 1086. The dissolution of the monasteries ended a residency that spanned five centuries, with Queens Mary and Victoria known to have paid regular visits. But it is for far more illicit reasons that Arata Manor has gained its supernatural notoriety. This is my first time on the Isle of Wight. It's reputedly the most haunted island in the world. I think one of the reasons is the fact that there are quite a few ley lines. Ley lines going to Avebury, Stonehenge, passing over or through the island. And the other reason is, of course, we've got a very close-knit community. People have always lived in the same locations, and so the stories have been passed down from father to son, mother to daughter. And here we are in, well, I, I cannot believe this place. Um, as I drove up and saw this place, I, I, it, it's just the, the epitome of your haunted manor house. The sound of a child crying has often been heard here in the entrance hall, and this sturdy door has been known to bolt all on its own. Many people have witnessed the sounds of loud bangs as if someone or something is trying to get in. A young girl called Annabel Lee was killed here. Is it her face that's been seen staring longingly out of this window? Is it her footsteps that have been heard echoing across the floor? And is she responsible for the cupboard doors opening and closing on their own? This is historically correct, that Barnaby Lee, the owner of the house, was dying. And his eldest son, who was going to inherit, couldn't wait. So he smothered his father in his bedroom. And unfortunately, the eight-year-old daughter, Annabelle, saw the brother doing it. He is reputed to have thrown her out of one of the bedroom windows. I believe that that little girl, cut off in her prime, doesn't know she's dead. Perhaps she needs our help. It would be very interesting if we actually contact her later on in one of the seances tonight. The image of a large black dog has been seen running around the dining room. This also used to be a courtroom. Keys have also been heard falling on the floor without any logical explanation. And the apparitions of a group of monks have also been seen floating across the floor. But they're not just seen in here. This is the oldest part of the house as it used to be the monks room and many people say that they're still here as they've seen monks kneeling and praying. Along with the sounds of children crying, I can imagine that this place in the middle of the night is going to be frightening. Parapsychologist Louis Sava has also joined us on this haunted isle. Rumour and folklore often links Ariton with gory tales of murder and bloodshed, preconceptions that he is keen for us all to ignore. Historically there was a murder here and people are actually seeing uh, the image of the murder victim, a, a young girl, at the window. Surely it can't be coincidence. I mean the thing that comes to my mind is that this is a very small island and obviously the murder would have been quite a, uh, an event in the island and so I can imagine that people told stories of this and people are expecting maybe to see a ghost of this murdered person so in my mind I feel it might be a bit of a historical tale that's being told and passed along. I mean people may well be seeing uh, a face at the window, um, but it might not necessarily be the ghost of this particular girl. But yeah, surely it's interesting. Why do you think a lot of people do, especially most haunted, do investigations in the dark? What's your theory on that? Because obviously people are seeing ghosts and apparitions in the daytime. Sure. I mean, if you look at the uh, the case collections, actually daytime um, 
apparitions are much less common. So I think the nighttime environment, which is unusual for human beings, is human beings do find it scary to be in the dark. We do experiments in the dark. If you put people into a dark room, they will see things. They will have visual experiences. Even in a laboratory, we do that as parapsychologists. We put people into dark environments and they will report seeing apparitions in a lab. So do you think it's all up here then? Well, I think, I, I don't want to say that people, that there aren't real experiences. People aren't necessarily seeing real things. But I, I do think that a lot of the apparitions we're dealing with will be uh, brain-based, yeah. So hallucinations or hauntings, what can we expect from the Isle of Wight? With spiritualist mediums Derek Okora and David Wells having joined us on the island, we could start to unearth the many mysteries that are said to still remain at Arreton Manor. female and a male um, they're both definitely not connected together I feel the male the male would be um, going back uh, a lot longer in time than the female mm -hmm. and uh, this female um, I, all I can say when I'm picking up it I get this like there's not she's not petite she's not of like small build she'd be a big one this mm. excuse me we had a big one but mm -hmm. like a big robust um, you know broad-hipped sort of woman and tall for mm. a woman because mm. she'd be near, as tall as me mm. and oh if you got in a way she'd push you out the way but i feel a gentle soul mm. not a negative woman yeah a genteel soul and i get i don't know what this means but i get the hague the hague something to do with the name the hague right and uh, that's her memory what about the man that you picked up on can we go through into that energy yeah. and into that room, yeah. please? He's a gaunt-looking man, this. He's taller than me. He's narrow of shoulders. And he's um, very gaunt-looking when he was in the physical body. He lost his life. It wasn't a natural way. It wasn't a natural way. Can you help me with this, Sam, please? Edward? Edward Brian. Bryant? It's Edward very clearly. Either Brian or Bryant. Brian. Edward Brian. And he comes back because he's confused of the manner in which the way he left his physical body, in other words, as he would classify so who died. Killed him? Who killed him then? I know. Oh, oh, bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Right, the ones who came and took his life, there was two of them, there was two of them, and it was on a carriage, horse carriage, and they pulled up in the carriage, one made entrance into the front of this building, he confronted him, and they, what, they knocked him down unconscious and took him away. Tales of vendettas and possible kidnapping, plus a kindly lady who held this house close to her heart. Could we discover more of the female that Derek felt was linked to the Hague? Her energies, mm. okay, are here. Mm. This belongs to her. In her heart, in her mind, she loves being here as well. Maybe even more so than up there. Mm. Amy, A-M-I, Tetchner. Tetchnook. Tetchnook. Okay. I feel Amy um, was at one point um, one of the heads of a family that were here and they were people of standing, high standing and I feel the only thing that angers her is, can I be mm. blunt about mm. this, there is an area in this home, in this building, where blood and nastiness and torture and everything went on. So where is this area then that this is? It, it is lower area, right. lower down. The trail of bloodshed still appears to be prevalent the further down through the building that we travel. So just how intense would this torture be as we hit rock bottom in the cellar? As we come into this energy, this area, um, this is an area which um, the good lady Amy doesn't um, really uh, relate to and she's not seeing it as it's looking now. 
um, she sees the um, the barbaric conditions uh, which were meted out to um, certain souls in this area at, the, at this level, gone way back in time. I feel from up above, screaming, crying souls, knowing that they're being dragged down to this level to meet their end. In other words, what was awaiting them down here after some kind, I wouldn't say court of justice, but a justice of man meeting out justice, bringing them down here, dragging them down here, uh, screaming out for mercy, and then just butchering them. Cellars are often known to hold far from pleasant auras, but Derek feels sure that this room contains far worse. But how much more could Ariton offer? Our night of fright would soon be underway. Ariton Manor, steeped in over 12 centuries of history. But how much of its past would this supposedly sedate island rather forget? Derek's sensing of both male and female figures has now been dramatically overshadowed by his belief that several layers of this home have witnessed torturous murder. Leaving a scene of gruesome gore, we head out of the cellar and back up to the ground floor in the hope of light relief. As I come into this room, it's like, just as a gesture, um, a person and persons who would come in here would want this door closed, mm. so to speak, and it's like people, individuals, being brought like this, mm. attended either side. Do you know how I can describe it? Like prisoner. Mm -hmm. A prisoner and someone sitting and listening to what was said about this person and then deciding the fate of the person. Now, it's almost it's not, like a courtroom. It, but it's not a courtroom, really. Mm. It's an unjust courtroom mm. because it was like there was no way um, that the person who was brought was going to get proper justice. Right. And a lot of them like that mm. were taken from this room, screaming, screaming for mercy. They didn't get mercy of. No. A lot of them had their heads, uh, they were decapitated. And, and, and those people you think haunt here a lot of them yeah. do the sounds from them right because I only mean, in that not, level down there yes right they're, they're unsettled souls mm. that's why amy doesn't like that right um because mostly and um, the spirit energies in this home in this manner mm. um are uh, you know benevolent mm. um and, and kindred good good and people. good souls mm. so there is a great deal of warmth there's only one section really this is tinged with mm. not proper justice yeah and that most definitely is part of the barbarism okay. that was caused here. Right. Ariton is fast becoming a home that abounds with misdeeds from its long and supposedly illustrious history. This reverend past is reflected by one particular tale. One of its ancient floors is said to still bear the indentations of kneeling, a sign of the daily worship that is likely to have taken place here. And with our cameras now in night vision, it was time for David Wells to read this antiquated house. There's um, the noise of, of monks chanting. Now, that's not what would have happened here. That's a prompt for me. This is how one of the ways that I see and hear. And actually, I'm not hearing monks wouldn't have, wouldn't have been singing much here. It's more, I think monks were here. But it's, um, it seems much more restrained, much more of a restrained order. I'm not big on, on monks' orders and I can't get what it is, but they seem more restrained. They're not silent, though. They're not silent. I'm aware of just one, one monk who may be seen here as a shadow, just a fleeting shadow. And I think what, um, what people may experience when they see him is actually a feeling of, um, of calm, of kind of like, well, I know you're here. Someone's really touched me twice. What? On my left arm. Kid. You all right? Yeah. What, grabbed you? No, no. 
prodded me twice up there on my arm twice like that. I mean, once it happened and I thought, ah, oh, come off it, well, and then it's done it again. With Richard a few yards from anyone else, what had caused him to react this way? An unconscious physical reaction or an invisible physical connection? Moving upstairs, further questions weren't far away. There's a little girl in here. Now she's wearing a bonnet, a little white bonnet. Um, and she's wearing a white shift. You know, like a white mm -hmm. nightgown, I guess. She's barefoot. And I'm just going to try and calm her down a bit, because she's a bit excitable. She's, she's kind of dancing around. You know, like a little girl would, would dance around going, singing. You know, oh, is she? You know, she's like singing, and she's only... She's, she's about... She's certainly under 10. Okay. You know, she's, and she's... Um, hang on, oh, okay. She just put a nasty image in my head. Um, and what it is, it's, it was her, it was her face, but her head was twisted to the side um, and bruised around her neck and her body was crumpled. Her body oh, was... Oh, 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 what? Shit. What's the matter? Somebody just touched my head. Another one. An ice cold, I, icy really? cold. Just, you saw me just look around and I, someone was stood right next to me when I look around. Yeah. And I a a tiny that. little icy cold. It looked like... Like trying to grab hold of my finger. Well, what did you see, John? I just, I just, someone was stood right here and I looked around and Carl wasn't there. He was there before, but he'd moved around. What, what, yeah. tall? Like just, just, no, not tall. Elbow height. Little girl. The little girl. Yeah. Annabelle. Yeah. Annabelle. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, if that was there. Can you um, just apologise? Yeah, yeah. okay. You okay. picked up the name of Annabelle. I think Annabelle's not, she's not worried about your reaction. She thinks it's funny. Okay. Ask her to do some more. Annabelle, could you do something more to one of my friends? Maybe touch them, play with us a little bit? Let's hear you dance around. What's oh, that? What was that? What was that? that? Annabelle, if that was you, could you do that noise again? <gasps> wow, that's brilliant, Annabelle. Annabelle, if that was you, could you do that noise again? <gasps> Annabelle, if that was you, could you do that noise again? <gasps> Annabelle, were you murdered here? Yes. yes. Annabelle, I think you were unfortunately strangled here, is that right? Yeah. Yes. That's fine. That's That's fine. fine. I know it's it's disturbing for you. Ask if ask does she like us being here? To knock twice if she can. Annabelle, if you like us being here, could you knock again, but this time maybe knock twice? <gasps> wow. And again. And that felt like it came from oh, behind me. Oh, thank you. And again. I think that came from behind me. Well, I see how to put it over there. No, I know. Okay, stay by car. There you are. Again. And again. It appeared that we were now surrounded by both auditory and physical phenomena. Surely so many people hadn't imagined so much activity. So was this Annabelle, the tragic young figure who met such a cold and callous end? David headed higher in search of an answer. You know, I immediately feel sick in this room, physically sick. You do? Yeah. Why do you think that is? Uh, I have to get to the point with that. I immediately feel really sick. Okay. Yeah, I'll just get a, a hold on it and I'll see why I feel so sick. That's you, that, that was Sorry, that was me. That was yes, you. sign. <laughs> sorry. Feels colder up here as well, doesn't mm. it? I'm very aware of um, the presence of Annabelle again. Is she here now? So following us around. I think she's she's quite quiet. She's just watching us. Um, hang on a minute. All right. She's just she's just saying to me. Sorry, she's just putting foul taste in my mouth now. The blood that I smell and taste mm -hmm. is the blood of her father. I'm seeing her father. Um, being stabbed, I think, uh, more than once, like in a frenzy, in an absolute frenzy, by, and all that's appearing to me is a black figure over him. And she's, she's got blood on her smock, and she's sitting, and she's sitting looking at it, she's watching it, so she's physically seeing this. Um, and the taste, and that's why I'm feeling sick, I'm feeling sick for the horror of it, and the horror of what's happening to him. Okay, she's, 
She's been joined by a man now, a man present in the house. Oh, God. Just kind of holding her back a little bit, oh, just no. protectively. Oh, protectively. Not, no, not, there's Nasty. no nastiness, no. If anything, he's looking after her more than anything, I would say. Um, not her father, but somewhere in the house, so maybe we should try and call Let's go him. down. Shall we go down? Yeah. Shall we do that? <laughs> yes. Yeah? OK. Yeah. Whilst Annabelle's sorry story appears to be common knowledge amongst the Isle's many ghost hunters, the exact circumstances behind her demise have never been fully substantiated. What is certain is that many believe that her death here in 1560 bears more than a coincidence to the ghostly apparition of a girl often reported at the manor house. And with poltergeist activity, possibly on every level, what would Ariton's entrance hallway now choose to throw our way? Different presence. Um, male presence in here. Um, okay. First of all, the shaman. I think this this is this is residual. I think he was involved in this. There's a banging. This door here. There's a bang, bang, bang at the door. You know, it's not a tap, tap. Are you ready for tea? Oh, God. It's a bang, bang, bang. Let me in. Right. Um, it seems that. The name I've got him for him is Henry, and he's, um, the bang on the door is someone wanting him to come out. They want him out, and it seems as if he's, um, he's needed somewhere else. To me, that's absolutely fascinating, because that actually happens. People hear that. People hear that bang, bang, bang on the door now. Any surname with Henry, can you ask? It sounds like this, like a summer hill. Or it's something like that, like mm -hmm. Summerhill. It's like a double, a double okay. name. Um, and as for era, mm -hmm. um, it's like 16 to 1700s. Okay. 16 to 1700s. Now I'm trying to get whether he's grounded here, and the, the immediate reaction I got was the pompous, "Well, why would I leave? Why would I leave?" Just like that. Yeah. Why would I leave? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sort of just like that. So he's listening to you. Yeah. Well, he's he's certainly aware of us. Yeah, he's certainly aware of us being here. Is there any way you can make a voice link with him or try and get more information out of him? It's kind of like if if with him because I communicate with my mind really right. to them, although we we do talk out loud. Um, it's kind of like. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my! Oh my! It's just flew. And a book. Yeah. Oh my. Very, very funny. Is it down here? Yes. Where is it? There, it's on the floor. Ian, we, you were near that, weren't you? Yeah. Did you is it touch warm? that? Well, I'm, not, I'm nowhere near touching the... But Nothing that didn't flew. Fall. It flew across the room. What is it? What book is Where it? is it so from? Do we know? It's about ghosts. It's about ghosts. It's about ghosts. Yeah, yeah. It's a book of ghosts on there the are, Isle of Wight. There are books here of ghosts. Where? Right, right, so it's... They're on the house of the They're on there. But that's behind Stuart. Does anyone have shots of this so we can locate where that came from? Let me just ask him if that was him. Henry, was that you? Well, he can't talk to me because he's too busy laughing. Yet again, all of those present were dumbfounded and amazed at what had just happened. The still darkness in this room had been sliced apart by the sound of a book flying through the air. It's kind of like a horn It's kind of like a horn It's kind of like a horn and I must confess that the paperback subject matter made this incident even more intriguing. Our adventures and horror had only just begun. <laughs> Everyone keeps on telling me dead. Ariton Manor is most haunted's Jacobean base on the Isle of Wight. But both spiritualist mediums Derek Okora and David Wells feel that this home has played host to a series of murderous events. Furthermore, several members of this investigative team have experienced what some believe to be poltergeist activity. But now was not a time to turn and run. Now it was time to begin the night vigils. Covering two levels, David, Ian, John and myself investigated the monk's room, whilst Derek, Kath and Stuart descended into the cellar, where previously Derek had picked up images of supposed brutal slaughter. I don't like this place, to be honest. I don't like the, um, the feelings that are emanating uh, from the brickwork, 
even from the floor. Um, but then again, I mean, that's sort of past tense now. But um, it's like I, I just pick up uh, an empathy and a sorrow and uh, anxiousness. I actually feel quite weak now, now. Do you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. Well, I feel like a lot of energies were drained from here down here, meaning in, in the physical form, and that generally is um, when you come to the atmosphere and that's in the ether, that will happen to you. So what we're doing here is um, we're going to do some automatic handwriting and see if David can actually um, make um, get a communication going with somebody here. And when the who's that? That was David breathing out. Yeah, what? Well, yeah. okay, okay. I've just seen a hand. What? An, an arm moving round that corner, round the door. No. Yes. What, into the room with She's the arm? on the video? Oh, uh, no. The room with the arm? Yeah. In there? Yeah. Just a shadow, but it was like somebody had done, had done sweep their arm across. I thought it was you when I panned the camera and there was no one there. Adamant that I had seen an arm nearby, I later checked back on tape. But unfortunately, this incident had passed without being caught on camera. Was it a trick of the light or evidence of something more sinister lurking within the house? Well, look, I, in this reserve, you know, here, what keeps on coming back and playback and it's just flooding out is the energies of nastiness, the energies of hate, of people's um, being, you know, dragged down here, and the last moments of the screaming and the agonies of torture. Uh, it's not nice down here. What's that? I heard that. That's a latch. It's a latch on the door. Not in that door, there isn't. There, even, there is in that room. Yeah, there is. And that's the entrance, the old entrance. And there's a door with a latch on it in there. And the door is bricked up the other side. Mm -hmm. No way. Yeah. Do you want to go in there? Are you happy to stay here? Um, no, Do you want to look at what you've got? I don't think there's much. I don't think it's What on the earth does that say? What do you think it says, David? I haven't got a clue. Mary? Mary W. I. S. T. Wisteth? I'm just going to look in this other room, see if. Mm. Just want to see if there is a latch on that door. On later analysis, David's disjointed words did appear to provide the name Mary Wisteth. As to who she is, we may never know. It's that door there, is it? Oh, it's open. It's open. Yeah, there's nothing behind it, though, is there? The door's like jammed. But isn't a latch that goes click click? Yeah, it just breaks. Yeah, just there's no it's latch that goes click click. There you go. Yeah, it's just breaking. Break time. Sorry about that. Sorry about I didn't realise it makes so much noise. I wanted to make sure you shut as well in case it opens. I'm going to have to go and leave on this spot as well. I think I'd like to try that. Okay. I don't think I'd like to go away without having done it. It's getting awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Folklore states that indentations on the monk's room floor to be attributable to daily worship, a religious theory that David is keen to explore. I feel calm, I don't feel mm. anything extraordinary. I actually, you know, if I were being 100% honest, I don't think this is where they're now to pray. Maybe. I think that's the myth. Let's be honest. A perplexing start to the night for Jules, with equal measures of skepticism and disquiet. Our next move was to send Carl, Stuart, Kath and David to the dining room where perhaps a seance would move the spirits to action. Is there anyone here? Is there anyone here that wishes to contact us? 
any astral beings, if you hear maybe tap on this table. No. Annabelle, if that's you, could you tap again? That was a tap, wasn't it? That was a tap. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't pinpoint it. Point. You said it came from at the top first and then on the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Annabelle, could you tap again for me so we can identify where you are? Annabelle, thank you for your presence. Is there anyone with you? Please tap if there's anyone with you. Annabelle, could you join forces maybe with the and other energies here and maybe move the, the light above our heads? Or maybe the plate on this table? Should we put the plate in the centre? Well, our hands over there. Annabelle, maybe you could make a sound on the plate. Could you generate that for me? It's 50 minutes now, so if we, if we went back, and maybe um, carry on with something else. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. let someone else come in here, see where they go. Yeah, okay. It's a bit hard to say, open the door into the dark room. You first? Yeah. Yeah. What the hell was that? Hey, that is that the plate? No. Wait, where's the plate? It's not on the table. It's on the floor. No. Oh, there it's there. You alright? Right. What happened? Yeah. Just say explain what happened. Something just grabbed, really grabbed my legs. It, was it quite low? Yeah, it was there. So it there. could have been Annabelle? It was there. She seems Where was it? To, it? It was It was there. She seems to be the type of it, it was a like It was a grab. It was, you know, you know when a kid grabs around, grabs around the hands around your leg? It was like that. Oh, like a hug? Yeah, like, it, was, it was really strong. A sudden explosion of activity sharply snapped everyone's senses, with yet another hint of poltergeist phenomena. But had the fall of the plate several feet from anyone else, and then Kath sensing of something touching her, been the signal that Arata Manor was full of paranormal intent? Derek, Louis, John Gilbert and myself decided to see if such activity could be encountered on the higher levels. See the man sitting on the floor, try and touch him if you can. Make it go icy cold around him, so he knows that you're there. I've got a little bit of a feeling that there's a figure in that doorway, that's why I'm looking at him. He's scared. That's horrible. Shit. I'm sure sorry, I just sorry. saw it as I turned around. <laughs> I'm sure I saw something, but... There's Are you there? That's probably just the lights. Is there someone watching us? I feel that there is. Are you standing in the doorway watching us? Are you inquisitive? Oh. You right, Derek? Yes. Do you not understand why we're here? Perhaps we can explain. But you must come to us. Come out of the shadows. Come and talk to us. It's so cold around me. Is it? Yeah, it oh, he's here. God, yeah, he's here. He's in here. Who are you? There's a, a male spirit person here. And he is in, in that room. Arata Manor is an ancient home on the Isle of Wight and it's providing an awful lot of evidential interest for the most haunted crew. There had already been several incidents of apparent poltergeist activity, and now in the attic, something seemed to have taken hold of Derek. Derek? 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 Okay, mate. Come back. Come on. 
Who are you? Are you the spirit we will speak with? Edward! Edward, hello, Edward. Are you Edward Bryan? Correct! Correct! Yeah. Edward, can you converse with us? Can you talk to us? Yes, I can! Yes, I can! We want to understand why you're still here. I want to be here! I want to be here! That's fine, that's what? fine. What? You don't mind us what? being here, do you? Where's that woman? Where's the woman? Who's that, Ace? Where's the woman? I'm here! Good lady. Good lady, good lady, good lady. What do you? Did you die, Edward? Dead, dead, dead. Keep on telling me dead, dead. Everyone keeps on telling me dead. He should have protected me. He promised me he would. Yes. Uh, yes, I will see him. I will see him. Edward, did Charlie they take you boy, away from your house? Charlie boy, Charlie boy, where are you? Where are you? Who was Charlie boy, Edward? Charles the first. You know, what year was he here? Gosh. You all right, Derek? 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 Sylvie? Derek? Derek? <sighs> you all right? You okay? You all right? Just lie there for a minute. Just lie there. It seemed that Derek had once again encountered Edward Bryan, a man he earlier claimed had been ambushed and murdered. Following such a strong reaction in the attic, Carl and Stuart later decided somewhat bravely to hold a final vigil there. Meanwhile, David felt that it was a good time to hold a second seance in the dining room. Are we in touch with a member of the Lee family? Is your surname Lee? No. Ask if it's some, some, someone from the Bennett family. Is your name Bennett? Are you a Benedictine monk that dwelt here? I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, it was the monks. I knew it. Yeah. yeah, you're a Benedictine monk. Can I ask you? Do you still wander here? Are you still part of the the fabric of this building? Do you still wander here? Can you knock on this table? Make a noise in the room? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Did you hear it? Yeah, I heard it. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. David, is there anything by me? I just get this overwhelming feeling that there's something behind me and I'm sure I could feel something tugging at my... a minute ago at my jumper. Was it below you? Was it... Pulling down on your jump pack. I felt there was someone stood there. Yeah. Someone stood there, and then when I was filming you, I could feel the back of a jumper like going. Right. It seems to me that that's what Annabelle's trick is. Annabelle, was that you playing with with Ian? Oh, Ooh, hello. Oh my God. Who's <laughs> Ian? She <laughs> likes you, Ian. <laughs> It actually looks like it's moving. You're kidding. No. Get the camera around there. Can you see it? Can you Where? keep doing it? The bottom, bottom right by right there. Here. It's difficult to tell. Annabelle, do it again for us. There's a good girl. Is it really good? Can start. you do it now? She's doing it again. Yeah. Thank you, Annabelle. Oh, Annabelle, oh. you're brilliant. C can you see it? It's very difficult to tell. It was fascinating. Oh, amazing. <laughs> What did you think to that, everybody? I'm not sure what to think, to be honest. Uh, I, need, I need to see more. I want something else to happen. Mm. What do you think, Ian? It was a totally bizarre experience because I was just still here talking to David and I could feel the jumper going. That's why I had to ask David if it wasn't just me imagining anything, I could actually feel it. But I also haven't like, been stood, stood here because I keep think, thinking that there's something over here in this corner. And I'm not like having me back to it, and I occasionally get the odd. And I wasn't sure if it was just, like, you know, because John's been walking around doing the sound, and I wasn't sure if it's John or. But I always get the feeling it was something over here. Is there anybody in this room with us now that wishes to communicate with us? We're not here to harm you in any way. If you can do something, let us know your presence. Light anomalies, turn a light on. Uh, sure. Fire, what the f was that? 
What was it? What was it? What? What? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know yet. The camera's going in and out of focus here. Just hang on. That came from that room. That definitely that came from the room. Yeah. Both point in the same direction. Oh shit! Yeah, I've just tripped up on something. That's what Get your camera noise. down there, Cal. That's what made the noise. Get your camera really, down. It's the, it's the sofa. It? It's the sofa. The sofa's come apart. Oh, it's on one of them tie-back things, isn't it? Hey? There's no knob. There's no knob. I can't put it back. Look, there's a, there's a hole there. I've got it. How the hell's that come down? Has that just come away, or...? I thought you were messing around when you hit the floor. No! <laughs> no, I mean, I didn't mean it. No, I know, I know, I know. I've just I tripped up over it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it, that's all. Uh, me and Carl have just left that room over there. We've just been walking through. All of a sudden we've heard a bang. No, we wasn't sure where it had come from. We thought it came from this room because, well, this happened, this end next to the room, literally what, I don't know. Eight feet away from the room, isn't it? Something like that. No more. Mm. Um, I've come back to to walk into the room and I've tripped up. What the hell was, was that? that? Is that? That was on the stairs. What was that? Oh, oh Carl, I'm no. getting that. Nate, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll... Don't, don't. I don't even want it. I, mean, I don't want to stay in here any longer. I just want to go to walk into the room and I've tripped up. To walk into the room and I've tripped up. Holy moly. What made that noise? There's no one else down there, is there? No. Call that, ask if there's anyone down there now. Is anyone down there? I've got I've got a torch a, a bit of a torch in my pocket. I'm I'm sorry, Steve, I'm gonna have to turn it on. Turn it well it's only my phone, but it's I think it's got a... Oh What is it, mate? What is it? Where? Where? I've got it somewhere. Holy shit! That's the That's the knob off there. So where do we begin? Several extremes of poltergeist activity in various areas of the house and on more than one occasion. This is a building that certainly seemed to live up to its own hype. Locked off cameras and Louis's other additional experiments may not have added to the many reported and recorded incidents. But Arata Manor had certainly provided a lot of debate both on set and even now after examining the recorded phenomena. All in all, it's been an extremely good 24 hours. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the house so much. It is such a fantastic place. And the amazing thing is that very early on, we were doing quite an early nighttime walk around with David Wells. And then lo and behold, we have a book thrown across the floor. Now, I know for a fact that there were three books that were on the windowsill. I'd looked at them before we'd started doing the walk round. I know they were there. And I have no explanation for how one of those books flew onto the floor. At one point during the investigation, the team left a room and a plate appeared to fall of its own accord from the table. Now there are a number of explanations from this. Where's One of them is to do with vibration. We're not sure if merely the presence of a number of people in the room and standing on particular floorboards would actually cause the plate to fall. Additionally, we don't actually know if anybody in the team accidentally may have knocked carpet or knocked another piece of furniture which could have caused the plate to fall off. So unfortunately it's not evidential in this particular circumstance. All in all, Arrowton Manor was a very, very interesting investigation for the most haunted team. However, in terms of paranormal evidence, I'm very, very sceptical and I would say the actual investigation did not reveal anything of paranormal origin. An island that claims to be the most haunted on Earth. And for this ghost hunting team, it had proved...